Anyway, so as Eva was saying, so I'm here today to talk to you about careers in, in the film industry. And just to, as an introduction, I just want to let you know what you're seeing right now on the screen is the demo reel of all the members of On Screen Manitoba. And what On Screen Manitoba is, is the professional association for anyone who works as a professional in the film and TV industry in Manitoba. So we represent producers, writers, directors, uh, directors of photography, crew people, distributors, film festivals. So we try really to incorporate everybody who works in the industry. And our job is actually to support them in their career. It's not so much in the production of their, what they do. They get finance, finances by somebody else to actually shoot their films. But once they're, they're done, we send them to festivals if their films have been sent to sell festivals. We have financial support for them to go to markets because it, as an industry, and I want to tell you today that we're gonna, we're gonna talk about the industry of filmmaking, which is that as an industry, we produce something, films, and we have to sell them so that we can see them on screen, right? So the industry part of it is really important for you to understand, I think everybody has made a little film, and especially now it's so easy, right? You have your cell phone and you can like shoot whatever and put, put that on your laptop and do like iMovie editing. But as an industry, we're talking about the professional side of things. And as an industry, there is a wide, very wide range of jobs and positions that are very, very important. And there is no nothing, there is no little position or jobs in the film industry because everybody is super important because there is all chain of creation that needs to be filled in, right? Um, so at On Screen Manitoba, my job is actually to be, I'm the, sh the head of industry services, which, which means that I'm the person in charge of understanding what the industry needs, what kind of support they need, and not so much financially, but also what kind of direction do they need? Because things have been changing a lot in the last, in the last few years, techni uh, technologically, technically, financially. So we, I need to understand what the industry feels and what it needs to actually be able to give them what they need. And I know that one thing, one big thing that they need is younger people. Because our producers, I mean, there is the, the history of filmmaking in Manitoba is like maybe 30 years old. It's not that, that old, but still. So the people who started the film career and the film uh, production companies 30 years ago, they're getting a bit you know, older and everything. So it's really important for them to bring new people and new ideas and new blood into the industry. So that's why I'm so happy to see so many people here this morning or this afternoon, I should say because there's a lot of things for you to do in whatever capacity you might have. And one of my, my main objective here today is try to show you how varied the, the film industry is, because we always think about what we see on screen, right? And this, of course, we're thinking, you know, there is, we need a writer, we need a director, we need a DOP, like director of photography, the camera people, but there is much more to the film industry than what you see on screen. So that's why the title of my presentation was actually, I should have said that at the beginning, but anyway. So working in the film and TV industry, there is more than meets the eye. So I want to tell you what's the more part of it. But before I do that, I just want to let you know who, a little bit of who I am and how I came into the film industry. As I said before, I came to Winnipeg 22 years ago already as an exchange student from France. I had no idea that I was gonna stay here for the rest of my life. And at the time, I was actually a linguistics student. So I taught French in, in St. Boniface University for 10 years. But I've always had this passion for two things, writing. I wrote since I was like, you know, wrote stories since I was maybe like, I don't know, six or six, five or six years old. And my other, other passion was anything visual. I took photography when I was eight and everything. So vi uh, writing and visual images were very important parts of my life, but I didn't really know what to do with them. And I didn't use them in my professional life at all. I was teaching grammar and linguistics. But what happened is that in 1999, I met somebody, a francophone producer in St. Boniface who just started a company, a film and TV company in Winnipeg in French, which was completely, at the time it seems like a very strange idea because there was no history of anything in French for film or television, right? So, but he was convinced that he could do it and he, his partner was somebody called Charles Lavac, Charles Lavac, 
who is a director of photography who has a very, very long career in film making in Vancouver. He was a DOP for big American productions, but also Canadian productions. And Charles wanted to come back to Winnipeg because that's where he was born and that's where he grew up. And for him, it was really important to grow that French TV film production company. So I met them once. And we just chatted like for maybe a few hours about films and da da da. But at the time, I had no idea that I could actually go into this industry because I didn't know anything about it. The only thing I knew is that every time I see something on screen, every time I see a movie, my heart starts pounding and I feel it's like so interesting and I wish I, could, I knew how to do this, right? And I'm pretty sure that most of you actually love films. That's why you're here today, right? You love watching films, you love watching stories, because that's what we do in our film industry. We tell stories, right? Either through films or documentaries. So documentaries will be more like factual stories, real life. And movies will be about you know, fictional stories that somebody wrote and somebody invented. So anyway, so what happened is that after meeting those uh, two people, it took another few years before they actually called me and said, you know, you remember that you were really passionate about maybe going into the, the industry? And we're actually looking for someone who, to do a documentary. We just got some funding for a French television network, and we want to give the chance to a new person, somebody who, with no experience, to try their first work. So I said, okay. So I pitched them two ideas. And that's how I started. I made my first documentary with them. I, I learned everything from scratch, right? And that's the, the great thing about the film industry. Everybody is very generous, and everybody wants to teach somebody else how to do things. So it's really easy just to follow along and you know to share ideas with people and professionals. So that's, that's what happened to me. I really got the chance to work on my first film with professional crew and everything. And the film was noticed, and it went to different festivals, and I got an award, and I was like, oh my gosh, somebody's telling me something here. So I quit my job. Uh, you know, very well paid, regular university job, and I studied in the, in the industry. And of course, as I said, I didn't know much except that I knew what I loved. And one of the messages that I want to give you today, that might be the only thing that you might come, you might bring from this session or from the whole day, is that you have to find what you really love to do. When you know, when you vibrate, when you think about it, that's where your heart and you, your brain and everything should go. Of course, it's easy for me to say because I've had the chance to actually find my passion and be able to actually make a living of it, right? So it is possible. I'm telling you it's, it is. It takes a while. You have to be patient. The, it takes three things to work in the film industry. Three, that I call them the three Ps. Passion, of course, patience, and perseverance because it takes a very long time to actually make things happen for yourself. But if you actually do believe in it, it's going to happen. So anyway, that's what happened to me. So I quit my job as a teacher, and I worked as a freelance writer and director for maybe 10 years. And I worked mostly in TV, in the TV industry, meaning that I got calls from different producers. So the producers are the people who actually get the money to produce the content that you see on screen. But the content itself has to be written and directed and da 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 by a crew. So they will call me and say, oh, well, we have this idea for a documentary series on Francophone artists outside of Quebec, for example. So I will take this idea and actually do the research, write the stories, and actually go and shoot those documentaries. Which was great for me, because that's how I learned all the trades all the tricks of the trade, right? Because I didn't know much. Even though I actually went to study writing and directing in Montreal for a few months, I really learned as I was going along. But what I learned as well is that in the TV industry, of course, you, don't, you can bring your own ideas, but there is a very little chance that they're going to actually be on screen. In the TV industry, what happens is usually the, the, pro the broadcaster or the, the producer have a very wide idea of what they want, and they hire you so you're always for hire to actually bring their ideas of their vision to the screen, which is a very great challenge, but it could be also very frustrating because as an artist or as somebody who has like their own vision and their own ideas, it's always a struggle to actually bring your own voice to something that really doesn't come from you or the idea, the, co the content doesn't come from you. So it's a challenge, but it's not impossible. And it's actually, I found that sometimes when you have a very strict framework to work with, it's actually more 
challenging, yeah, but more inspiring than to, to start from scratch from your own ideas, right? Um, what I learned as well, uh, so it's always a struggle between vision and giving what the broadcaster wants in a very, very limited uh, environment. For example, it says they're going to tell you to do a half hour documentary, but when they say half hours, remember that when you watch TV, there is always ads and uh, commercial breaks. So it's really a 20, 22 minutes and 56 seconds work, right? So, so the 56 seconds is actually that important. It means that your creativity is very, very structured, which is not a bad thing, again. But for me, I realized after a few years that really my heart was not so much, I love documentaries because what I, what it made me do, I traveled all over Canada because of different documentary series that I work on. I also traveled abroad. I went to France and Italy and Turkey, and it was great because you shoot the real life and you try to make stories out of them. But really, my heart was more into film, uh, films and movies, and I wanted to write my own stories. So that's why in the last few years, I've been going away from TV and more into the, the film itself, and I've been developing my own stories, writing scripts and da-da-da. But that's a very, very long process because there's not that much money to be made, I can tell you that, in the film industry. And also there's not that much money to actually produce films, unfortunately. It's very competitive, so you might have a great script, but it takes a very long time to actually be able to produce it. So in the meantime, what I do, because I love it so much, I work on other people's projects. Uh, in the introduction, Eva was saying, so I work as a writer-director, that's my own position, let's say, or my titles, but any time I get the chance to work on somebody else's project, I will do it. And I worked as a picture editor, and as a picture editor, I don't know if you are aware of all the process of filmmaking, but we always think about, yeah, when you do a film, you shoot. Yes, you shoot, right? So you have the crew, you get all the, the visual, but after that, the, the next stage is the post, what, what we call post-production, which is actually, for me, the most exciting because that's, that's actually when the film comes together. So you have maybe, for the same scene, for example, if I was to shoot a scene here today, I might have different takes. Like I will have a very wide shot of the room so that I can see that you know the context is symposium with a, you know uh, high school people. I will have maybe I'm going to shoot a few close-ups of you guys. You want to see how exciting you you look at me and you <laughs> you seem to be listening to me. I will have maybe a close-up of myself because I you for the viewer you want to to show them who's speaking and da da da. I might have something with the screen. So anyway, so I might have. 20 minutes or um, even more of ma visual material to actually convey what's going on today, right? But on screen, those 20 minutes coverage uh, might be maybe a 10 second clip. So in the editing suite, the, the, the picture editor's job is actually to choose the shots, right? And to actually order them and structure them and organize them so that it makes sense visually for the viewer. And that skill as an editor is a very interesting um, position because the, the picture editors, they're never on set, they never actually see how the film is being shot. The only thing they get is the visual, the coverage, the footage that, they, that we bring them back. And their job is actually to make sense of it and to create a structure and a visually interesting scene so that the viewer gets the, gets the point. And so it's a very technical job because it's like you work with a computer and you have all those files and everything, but it's also a very creative job. And for example, on this reel, the picture editor, he's the one who actually chose every little piece of visual and, and decided where to put it, right? He also, they also work with the, the, the director, right, of course, but most of the time they're by themselves with the visual and they just get the story told. And I did that for a few years uh, on different documentaries, and it was for me it was the best, almost the best way to learn filmmaking as a director. Because as a director, when you have actually edited somebody else's work, you realize what to do, what not to do, or the challenge to make it work, you know, visually and structurally. Um, what else do I do for other people? I also, most recently, I was a script supervisor, and I don't know if any of you know what a script supervisor does on set. Any idea? 
No way. So the script supervisor is a very, very essential position on set. So when I say on set, so that's where we shoot. It could be in a studio, it could be outside, it could be anywhere, right? So you have the director who's trying to make, you know, all the crew shoot what he wants. He has the actors playing something. If it's a documentary, he's like following whatever the, uh, the, the, the main character is doing or not. So the script supervisor is actually the person, and it's usually women for some reason, and I think I know why. It's because it's a very detailed-oriented job. So that's why women tend to be more detail-oriented, and that's why there is a lot of positions in the film industry for women. That's something that I will talk about to you a bit more later. But So the script editor is the one who has the script in hand and makes sure, especially for movies, makes sure that the director gets everything that he needs for to shoot a scene. So she's also the one thinking about the editor. She knows that the editor is gonna need lots of visual to convey the scene, right? So she, she makes sure that the director gets what he wants and the editor gets what he wants. But she's also the one that has to be very precise about, for, for example, for the dialogues. In a very long scene, there might be dialogues, you know, between three actors, and she's the one who has to know the dialogues. She doesn't have to, know, to learn the scene, but she knows the dialogues, and she knows after one take that this actor made a mistake at some point, or that performance was not the best. So she takes notes all the time, and she's like the, I call her the director's external brain, because the director is, there is so much thing, so many things that he has to think of, or they have to think of during the shoot, that she's the one who actually records everything that that director thinks. And those notes are very important. So she might, she might say, okay, in this take, director says, no, it's not good because you know, actor number one was great, but actor number two was not that good, or there was something bad with the sound and everything like that. So all those notes, actually essential for the editor, right? Because the editor who was not on set, remember? He gets all this visual, but with the notes that the script of supervisor gives him, he knows which take is good, he knows which one is not so good, so it's, it's a way of, for him to actually organize a little bit what the, the director brings to him. So the script supervisor job is really amazing because you're always with the director. He doesn't go anywhere apart from the, the bathroom <laughs> but he doesn't go anywhere without you because he knows that you're the one who's going to record everything that, and I say he, I shouldn't say he because directors, they're not always male, right? So what the director, they think of the, during the shoot. And it's also the best position for me, I get always excited when I'm a script supervisor because again, as a director, I get the chance to actually observe how other directors work and I can see how they deal with the actors or with their crew and or with their you know, art department. So it's very, very interesting. So always remember, if you're interested in filmmaking, it doesn't mean that you have to be direct, the director all the time. You can learn about filmmaking in every different positions that you actually have on set or in post-production or even in pre-production. Because what we call pre-production is what needs to happen before we even go on set. For example, if you have this script and you know that, for example, it's gonna have to be shot in a club, right, like this, right? So there are people who, whose job is actually to find where we're gonna shoot that scene. You know, because the director needs a club, he needs like extras, he needs you know, somebody to actually do the lights and everything, so the whole pre-production part is also, is also a very essential part of filmmaking. Because if we don't get organized before the shoot, everything falls sometimes, it's like a nightmare, right? So pre-production means that we also need people, and people actually do work as production managers or location scouts, so people who actually specialize in knowing there is everything to know about Winnipeg and Manitoba, because they know that if somebody's looking for a great club, looks like the 70s, da da da, they know exactly where that person should be shooting, right? Uh, where was I going? Yeah, so I was just giving, trying to give you a little bit of a sense that filmmaking is not just about what's on screen, but what comes before and what comes after. Because remember that one of the big challenge, and I was telling you about the industry part of filmmaking, is that we produced something, right? The, the a product that we sell is actually the stories that we want to tell. Those stories are, short, of course, on screen. Big screens, small screens. That's why On Screen Manitoba changed their name a few years ago. We used to be called Manitoba Motion Picture Industry Association, right? But motion pictures is like a very old style of thinking about films. 
So we, we decided to call ourselves on screen because we can watch movies now on any kind of screens, right? You can go to the movie theaters, can watch it on your laptop, on your iPhone, on your tablet, or your, on your iPad. So how do we actually get those stories seen on screen? Well, we need people whose jobs are actually to do the marketing of these projects. We need people who do the distribution. We need people to actually work in film festivals, right? So, so that the, the audience, which is you, can actually get the chance to see those, uh, those products. Um, what else should I say about the wide range of things? Um, one of the nice things about Winnipeg in particular, or Manitoba, I don't know if you realize, but Manitoba is a very well-respected film industry in Canada, but also all over the world. There are big productions coming to Winnipeg or Manitoba to shoot their projects. They could have gone anywhere else, right? But sometimes they choose to come here, and the, the message that we always get from whoever comes to shoot in Winnipeg or Manitoba is the quality of the professionals they work with. Apparently, we have the best crews ever, and I, I don't, I'm not surprised, because the, there is something in the Manitoban way of doing things which is very non-competitive. Everybody works together for the same purpose, which is to make the greatest film, right? So in, in the crew, there is always a very strong sense of friendship and professionalism, and also very, there is no big egos in Manitoba. In crews in like bigger centers like Toronto or Vancouver, I know that I've heard that people are so competitive that they might actually try to sabotage somebody else's work on set. There is nothing like this in Manitoba at all because we're still a smaller center and we are very proud of what we can produce and we are very proud of working together and that makes a huge big difference. And I think that's why I love working in this film industry so much. It's of course, it's because of the creativity, the creativity, it's because of my passion, but it's also because of the people that I get to work with. It's one of the industries that you can't do anything on your own, right? You always have to work with somebody else at all stages of the process. So you have, <laughs> there's a joke in the industry. It's, uh, it says, if you want to work in the film industry, you need GPS. And GPS is actually good people skills, and it's true because you have to know how to deal with people all the time. And it's not always easy. Some personalities are more challenging to work with, but that's a great, when you actually get the chance to meet those people and work with them, it's a very interesting way of self-development as well, because as yourself, you will realize that you, your way of doing things might not match with somebody else, but if you really want to work together, you have to learn how to work together. So it's really an industry or a career that really makes you, a, I think, a better person, in lack of a better word. Uh, what else can I say? I'm gonna be a little bit more specific about really what the industry is all about, and especially for you. I know that it must be very overwhelming. You've been here for a couple of days, and you've been hearing those jobs, and it must be so, what, where, where can I fit in that picture, right? So I'm just gonna give you an idea of all the different skills. As I was telling you, there is so much, so many different jobs that maybe you might not have thought about before in the film industry. For example, somebody who's into very manual kind of work, painting, carpentry. On the set, we have a set, right? We have props, we have things to create. So being a carpenter or being a painter in the film industry is a great thing because there's always work. As soon as somebody wants to shoot something, there's always a need for actual manual labor, right? If you're more into accounting, I know you're gonna tell me accounting and film doesn't make sense. It does because film industry, it, it, make, it, it takes unfortunately a lot of money to make a film. So there are budgets to be made, there are budgets to be respected. So the whole money financial part of the film industry is something that we can't do without. And we do need people who actually are excited about figures, which is not my case, unfortunately. I have to learn to get excited about you know knowing how to budget uh, my productions because there is not an unlimited budget, right? So I have to learn, even though it's really difficult for me, that you know, shooting, uh, if, if in my head as a director or as a writer, I have this gorgeous shot, like this aerial shot from a plane of Lake Winnipeg and we go down on the beach and there is somebody playing with their kids. Beautiful, right? But you have to realize that that might cost you, I don't know, 
10, 15 grand for one shot that might be like a 10 second thing on screen. So you have to get this sense of reality, right? So the accountants, the accounting people are very important because they are the ones actually counting the money and, and it's very, why not do it in the film industry rather than do it in a bank or for somebody else, right? Uh, there is a few office positions, of course. So, of course, uh, accounting. I was telling you about the production manager. So the production manager is somebody who's actu whose job is actually to understand what the needs are from the director's part. He knows or she knows the director, we have like a 20 day shoot. We know that there is like 15 different locations and we have to organize all of that, right? We have 10 actors. Some of the actors are here for two days. Some of them are here for three. Some scenes are with that actors one and two and three and the other one is three and four. So it's, it's a huge big puzzle. So the production manager is actually that person who has this very logical mind and who can put all pieces together, right? So they don't have to be creative in a sense that they don't have to actually be writers or directors, but they have to be very organized. They have, a, they have to be very efficient in the way they do things because again, money, I mean, time is money in this industry. So if we can do that shoot, that scene, if we can shoot it in half a day instead of three because you know we're gonna be in the same location, these kind of things, that's the kind of person we need to bring us back to reality. So again, if you're a very logical person, if you're very organized and you like to solve problems or challenges, production manager is the way to go. And it's, very, it's a very rewarding job as well because I've never had to do it and I hope I'll never have to do it because that's not my cup of tea at all. But I'm always very, very, very thankful to the production manager who's helping me as the director to actually make things happen. Because if those guys are not prepared, if those guys don't give you what you need as a director, you will never get anywhere, right? More technical side of things. Of course, on f to shoot a film, you need visuals, right? So you need a camera department. So you need people who can actually work with cameras, but also with lights. Because if you look at those, those images, Almost none of them use natural light. You know, they are actually lit on stage, and that on set. So that means that we have people whose job is actually to know exactly where to put the lights, how to put them, and you know, when you're talking about lights, sometimes you have like huge, huge, big projectors and everything. So we need electricians. We also need people who actually are good with sound. Of course, I don't know if you realize, but the sound aspect of a film is as was almost as important as the visual. There is nothing worse than a, than a bad sound. You, you could have great images, but if your sound sucks, sorry, but your, your audience is not gonna be in the scene, right? So the sound recording department is a very, very important uh, part of the crew on set, but it's also a very important part of the crew in post-production, because as I was saying, after the shoot, you actually get all the footage, and once you put everything together, most of the time, the sound that you hear when you look at the, f you watch a movie, has actually been added after the shoot. Because on set, you can have different kind of, of sounds and everything, right? So most of the time, the dialogues actually re-recorded afterwards. All the sounds, like, you know, if you have this scene of the rain, you know, dropping, it's a big, huge thunderstorm. Of course, the thunderstorm was not actually there when we shoot it, right? We might have the visual effects, the, the lights, but all the sounds actually added afterwards in post. So if you're someone whose uh, inclination is more about, you know, sound or music and thing, again, in post-production, that's the whole different aspect of filmmaking, the sound and the music scape, right? And when I did my first short film, I was amazed by the work that we actually did just creating the soundscape, right? It was in an office and we could see, we could hear the fax machine going this way and then, uh, you know, footsteps and then even pens on papers. All that aspect of filmmaking is actually done afterwards with people whose job is not about visual, it's really everything about sound. And that takes very, very particular people with particular skills. Same thing with the music. Of course, there is very little, very few films who don't use music. 
And as a director or as a producer, you can choose, do I want to actually buy music which is already done, and that's very expensive most of the time because of the copyrights and everything, or do I want to actually hire a composer, a local composer, whose job is to, to write music anyway, and actually work with them with that particular uh, film and create that particular you know, atmosphere for that particular scene. And as a director, I know that that's almost I always, I always say that that's my, my best, my most favorite part. All, all stages are my most, most favorite part. But working with a musician, a, a composer, it's actually very, very rewarding. Because again, if you, if you look at the film, you have to notice how much the music can be so important. Sometimes too much. I mean, my personal taste is that I hate when I see a scary, scene and the music is scary, or the a sad scene and the music is sad. For me, I, I'd rather have a little bit of a distortion between the two, like a sad scene, but the music being a bit light or, you know, or cheerful, or the other way around, right? A very cheerful, light, uh, you know, scene, but if the music conveys something more than what the visual conveys, it's like even more satisfying for the audience as well, right? Uh, what else could I say? There is so many things I would like you to say uh, to say to you, but I see Eva coming with a little thingy there. Okay, so how many of you, when you go to a theater, actually stay till the end of the film? When I say to the end, I'm not saying to the end of the story, but to the end of the film, what goes on screen? Okay, a few, that's great, because that's, when you see the credit roll rolling on the screen for minutes, sometimes like three, five minutes, like wow, and you see all those names, hundreds of names, you realize that all of those people actually worked on that film. So all of those people actually have a specific job to do for that film, but imagine they might actually be working on 10, 20 films a year, right? So there is jobs, and there is like very odd jobs that you might not even think about. For example, uh, if you like animals, some, um, not in this one, but some, some films actually need animals on set. So we have people called the animal wranglers, and an animal wrangler is the person who actually takes care of the animals, and sometimes it could be a big challenge. It takes skills to actually, I shot with a cat for in my first, a, a little dog for my first film. It was a big challenge because he was not as, you know, obey, obeying as the actors, right? So anyway, actors, of course, if you have an inclination for acting, yes, film, the film industry is all about actors and characters and da-da-da, but I have to tell you, though, that it's a very tough job to be an actor because competition, of course, not that many productions locally being made regularly to be, you know, to make you, to give you like a regular salary or a regular paycheck. And I think that's, and I don't want to, to leave you on a sad or a down note, but the film industry is a very tough industry in that sense because everybody's for hire, right? So you're always freelancing as a writer, as a director. The crew people don't actually get a one-year contract. They get called for like, okay, we have a shoot for three weeks or, that, and, or maybe two months. And it's always a very irregular paycheck, which is a very, could be tough, but on the other hand, when it happens, it's so exciting and it's so rewarding that people have to, that's what they, they live with, right? And there are good years and bad years. This year is actually pretty, it's starting to catch up, so it's pretty good. There is like a lot of productions going on right now. Last year was really, really slow, and when it slows, it means that some people actually leave Manitoba because there's not enough volume of production. But again, doesn't mean that the next year is not going to ha be happening, right? And that's especially for film crews. But I was telling you about the TV production industry, and there's a lot of TV being made in Manitoba. Think of the, the hours of content that needs to be produced every year. You know, how many channels is there is available now on cable? Like hundreds of channels? And those channels actually ha need content, right? So there's a lot of TV production being, being created in Manitoba. There's lots of production companies. And before I, f so there is, there is, I was gonna say there is hope. There is a lot of things to be done. And there is a lot of opportunities for young people especially as I was saying that our industry is getting a bit older. And one thing that I wanted to uh, get your attention to, there is a website that we on Screen Manitoba created just a few 
months ago. So this is a scoop for you guys. It's called Get Onset Manitoba. I'm going to show it to you on screen. So this website, Get Onset Manitoba, as you can see, is get, try to collect all the information you need as people who might be interested in coming into the East industry about where to start, how to start, how to get involved and informed and how to get trained. So I will advise you to go, I, I don't have the time to actually go through the website with you today, but go on the website and just, you know, look at what information we have, look at the resources. There is a lot of resources for you here in Manitoba, in Winnipeg. Winnipeg Film Group, On Screen Manitoba, there is Film Training Manitoba, there is so many resources. And the last thing I would like you to, I would want you to remember is that this industry is all about networking and not being shy about approaching people, telling them about your passion and what you want to do. Because it's an industry where it's when you talk to people, just the way it happened to me. I talked to some guys one, one, one day and three years later, I was hired by them, right? So you have to be, don't be shy. That's what I'm saying. Don't be shy. Try to go and meet the directors or the writers and just tell them about your passion and you would like to try to do something and volunteer. I still volunteer a lot on different, on different shoots because that's how you meet people. That's how people know you. That's how they can see how you work. And it creates a very, very, it's a very relationship-driven industry. It's all about relationships with, you know, how you work with people and how you make yourself known to them, right? And one of the best way, again, is to volunteer, to get in touch. And in, in, uh, in order to get in touch with everybody who works in the industry, at On Screen Manitoba, we produce, every year we produce this directory. It's like a phone book, right, of everybody who works in the industry. And it's, it's organized in different positions, like the producers, and you have the cast and crew, and you have the talent. What we call the talent is the actual the actors. We have the post-production post uh, supervisors and stuff. So if you, I couldn't bring you one copy each, of course, today, right? But I have my, my I was gonna say my credit card. I have my business card here on the table. And if you want to take it and, and just send me an email, we can actually, I could give you one of those phone books. And this is the way to go because just call people and in the film industry, everybody's very generous. I don't know why, maybe because people know that it's a tough industry and everybody has to cling together, but very, people are very generous with their time and their advice and their expertise. So please don't be shy and just, you know, get there. If that's really what you want to do, ask questions, you know, go volunteer, go shadowing on a shoot and, and yeah, that's what I can tell you today. So thank you for being so attentive.